Welcome everyone to Sussex Squadron. I am Lawrence Bett. Ever pondered on how a royal duchess finds herself in contract with a top-notch Hollywood agency? Come, let's unfold the path travelled by the Duchess of Sussex. Merely a year in the past, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, inked a pact with WME, a juggernaut in the realm of Hollywood agencies. The excitement encompassing her signing was tangible, as numerous agencies were in the race to represent her. As the dust receded and WME emerged as the winner, the underlying competition evolved into a wave of grudge. The agents left out in the cold were quick to defame the Duchess, albeit their attempts did little to a scratch on her sparkle. Meghan's alliance with WME wasn't an impromptu decision. It was a well-thought-out move, a pivotal part of a grander scheme. As the Duchess and WME spent a year in secrecy, murmurs of a fresh venture started to spread. This venture was known as American Riviera Orchard, or ARO, an up-and-coming lifestyle brand carrying a royal essence. With the hint of cookbooks, a cooking show, and a range of products, ARO was causing a stir even before its official launch. Each update on the brand's trademark applications only added fuel to the speculation. People were convinced that Meghan would be selling an assortment of products, but let's clarify the Duchess was not merely seeking to sell. She was solidifying her brand, ensuring every potential ARO product was under her control, safe from any sort of imitation. In the midst of the thrill and anticipation, a choir of royal experts started to hum a different melody. They asserted that Meghan required A-list endorsements for ARO to flourish. Why, you might wonder, even prior to the sale of the first jar of jam, the Duchess had already attracted millions worth of free media. Simple mentions of ARO branded dishware was enough to stir up a frenzy and steer attention. The more these self-proclaimed experts endeavoured to belittle Meghan, the more the public stood by her. It appeared that every critique only amplified the desire to back the Duchess and whatever she was vending. With the Duchess in its fold, WME had a distinctive royal touch to its roster. But what was simmering behind the scenes? From royal duties to lifestyle brand, the Duchess's journey is nothing short of intriguing. With a dream and a vision, Meghan embarked on a new adventure, the conception of American Riviera Orchard, or ARO. This was not just a whimsical idea, but a well-thought-out plan, a grand strategy that was in the works for over a year. With the backing of WME, one of Hollywood's biggest agencies, Meghan was ready to step into the world of lifestyle and brand building. ARO was not just a name, it was a reflection of Meghan's aspirations, a testament to her determination to create something meaningful and impactful. It was an embodiment of her desire to offer something unique to the world, a brand that would resonate with people from all walks of life. The Duchess had a clear vision for ARO. It was to be more than just a brand, it was to be a lifestyle. ARO was set to offer a vast range of products, from cookbooks to a cooking show and even branded dishware. But it wasn't just about quantity, it was about quality. Each product was to be a reflection of Meghan's own tastes and experiences, a slice of her life shared with the world. But ARO was not just about products, it was about creating a community, a space where people could connect and share their experiences. It was about promoting a lifestyle that was wholesome, healthy and sustainable. And at the heart of it all was Meghan, who was ready to share her journey with the world. The Duchess was not naive. She knew the challenges that lay ahead. She knew that building a brand was not an easy task and that it would require grit, determination and a lot of hard work. But she was ready. She was ready to put in the effort to face the challenges and to make her mark in the lifestyle industry. With ARO, the Duchess of Sussex was ready to make her mark in the lifestyle industry. But would it be that easy? Only time would tell. But one thing was clear. Meghan was not one to back down from a challenge, and with ARO she was ready to take on the world. Trademarking isn't just about claiming a name, it's about safeguarding a brand's identity as the Duchess of Sussex learned. With the birth of American Riviera Orchard, or ARO, Meghan was quick to recognise the importance of protecting her brand. This wasn't just about securing a catchy label, it was about ensuring that the essence of ARO could not be duplicated or misused. The Duchess, in her characteristic forward-thinking manner, began filing for trademarks. And not just for a single category of product. Oh, no! 
Megan was thinking big, covering a wide range of potential ARO products. From cookbooks to dishware, she was leaving no stone unturned. This sparked a whirlwind of speculation and anticipation. What was the Duchess planning? Was ARO going to be a lifestyle brand encompassing all aspects of the home? But amidst the excitement, there were also concerns. Concerns about potential knockoffs. The Duchess was well aware of the dangers of brand imitation. After all, she's been in the public eye long enough to know how quickly success can be shadowed by cheap replicas. By securing her trademarks, she was building a fortress around ARO, protecting it from the vultures of the marketplace. While some might view this as excessive, Megan knew the importance of being thorough. A brand is a promise, a commitment to quality and authenticity. By trademarking every potential aspect of ARO, she was not just safeguarding her brand, she was safeguarding her commitment to her customers. And let's not forget the Piers Morgans of the world, always ready to cash in on someone else's success. Megan was not about to let him or anyone else finance some ARO knockoff line. By securing her trademarks, she was sending out a clear message. Aero was hers and hers alone. With her trademarks secured, the Duchess was ready to launch ARO. But what about the support she needed? Was she banking solely on her royal status, or did she have a few A-list endorsements up her sleeve? Only time would tell. Does a royal duchess need A-list endorsements for her brand? Let's delve into the debate. In the world of business and branding, endorsements from A-list celebrities can indeed be a game-changer. They can lend credibility, increase visibility, and enhance the appeal of a product. But does the Duchess of Sussex need this for her American Riviera Orchard brand? Well, some royal experts certainly think so. They argue that a stamp of approval from the likes of George Clooney would be a surefire way to skyrocket ARO's market presence. But let's break it down a bit. Why would a royal duchess with her own global fame and an already established following need the backing of Hollywood A-listers? The Duchess of Sussex isn't just any entrepreneur. She's a former actress, a philanthropist, and a member of the British royal family. Her name alone carries weight and garners attention. When she so much as whispers about a new venture, the world listens. The buzz surrounding ARO, even before a single product has hit the shelves, is testament to this. Moreover, the controversy that seems to follow her every move has a silver lining. It keeps her in the spotlight and, by extension, her brand. Every critique, every debate, every headline inadvertently serves as free advertising. Tom Bauer's predictions about Aero-branded dishware causing a royal ruckus is a prime example. So, does the Duchess need A-list endorsements? Perhaps. But one could argue that she's already got something far more powerful. A global platform, a captivated audience, and a brand that's become a talking point without a single product on the market. In the end, it seems that the Duchess of Sussex has managed to harness the power of her own royal status and the controversy that surrounds her, turning them into a publicity machine for her brand. Endorsements or not, the Duchess of Sussex's venture into the lifestyle industry has certainly captured the world's attention. It's been quite a journey for the Duchess of Sussex from royalty to the lifestyle industry. We've delved into the tale behind the Duchess's entrance into the world of lifestyle labels, We've observed how her partnership with WME, one of Hollywood's major agencies, paved the way for what was about to unfold. The emergence of American Riviera Orchard, or ARO, wasn't merely the unveiling of a fresh venture. It was a declaration of intent, a loud and clear signal that the Duchess was prepared to forge her own path. ARO, conceived as lifestyle brand with everything from cookbooks, a cooking show, to a plethora of products, embodies the Duchess's big dream. The trademark controversy has been an intriguing subplot in this tale. The Duchess's choice to register for a variety of trademarks wasn't simply a business decision. It was a strategic move, conceived to, to safeguard her brand against imitation lines and to guarantee that she has complete authority over ARO's image and reputation. The need for ARO to get endorsements from A-list celebrities has sparked a heated discussion. Some argue that the Duchess requires the support of influential figures like George Clooney. But the Duchess's journey so far implies that she's quite adept at creating hype and attracting attention to her brand. 
It's evident that her fame and her ability to captivate audiences are resources that she's effectively employing. At its core, this story is about more than just a lifestyle brand. It's about a woman who isn't scared to gamble, to deviate from the norm and to create her own trajectory. It's about the Duchess of Sussex, who, once a member of the British royalty, is now aiming to become a queen of the lifestyle sector. Whether ARO will triumph or not, one thing is evident. The Duchess of Sussex isn't afraid to navigate her own route. I am Lawrence Bett, and thanks everyone for tuning into the channel. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button.